Welcome to the McPhee Annual Performance Reporting Process. In this recording, we will provide an overview of the Annual Performance Reporting Process in the Home Visiting Information System, or HVIS, and describe the Technical Assistance, or TA, resources available to you prior to and during the reporting period. Let's get started. The timeline for the reporting process is as follows. On October 1st, the reports are generated and are available to you within HVIS, which is a part of the Electronic Handbooks, or EHBs. Once they are available, you'll have until October 30th to complete and submit the report. Throughout the month of November, your project officer and TA specialist will, will review your submission and have conversations with you as necessary. As part of the review, the PO may request changes in which the report will be sent back to you for updates. It is essential that you have staff available during this time who are able to address reviewer feedback and revise and resubmit your report if necessary. Typically, report submissions should be approved by your PO by the end of the first week of December. To access your report, you will click on the task from the EHB's homepage, which will take you to the pending task list page. The performance reports will be labeled grant submissions under the task category column. From there, the, ta the tracking number for annual performance reports will start with HVAR under the tracking number column. Once you've identified your annual performance report, you can click on start or edit under the options column. In some cases, you may not be able to access your report. The top three reasons why awardees are unable to access their reports are one, staff have not been given access to, re to the report. Two, the latest grant number hasn't been added to the portfolio. And three, the project director of the organization is different from the project director listed on the notice of award or NOA. If any of these reasons apply to you, please contact your PO as soon as possible or prior to submission time. We have provided links to helpful videos on the HRSA tube page. Each YouTube video will address the top three reasons listed here. If you still are experiencing issues after following the steps in the HRSA tube videos, please feel free to go to the contact center, which will be provided to you towards the end of this presentation with other contact information. Remember, the report will be created under your most recent X10 grant number, which will be issued by September 30th of each year. Each of these steps need to be completed for your most recent grant. Once you have access to your report, you will land on the status overview page that will provide you summary information of your report. The first area provides the due dates for the report and lets you know how many days until the due date. The second area provides you links to the resources that are available to you, such as options for accessing the report. The third area provides a summary of your submission progress where not started indicates pages not opened, in progress indicates pages open and information entered but not completed, and complete. 
indicates award awardees submitted all necessary data. The fourth area in the performance report box where more details of the progress of submission are shown by report page. Here, you can access a specific section of the report, view the status of each section, and view the timestamp the section was last updated. The fifth area is the left-hand navigation that can be seen throughout the report. This has similar information as the performance report box but is able to, to be seen throughout your report. The sixth area is the validation report box, which shows you that data submitted in the report does not match with the system validations. The most common errors are that the data entered in form one does not equal the total populations found on the participant count tables, which are tables one for participants and tables two for households. And the seventh area in the sum is the submit and print box. We recommend that you download and save a copy of your report prior to submission. Remember, the validation report must be passed in order to submit the report to your PO for review. <clears throat> Once you have selected a section of the report from the overview status page, you'll find yourself in an area of Form 1 or Form 2. Here is an example of Form 1 based on the 2018 form, where each table will have a section for comments for you to provide. These comments will be visible to your PO and TA specialists. Comments are not required, but we ask that you provide a comment if the total missing data for that table is greater than 10%. To easily navigate through Form 1, we encourage you to click Save and continue to move to the next page. Clicking save will save your work, but will keep you at the same page. Here's an example of form two. Let's take a closer look. First, navigating form two, areas one, seven, and eight will help you save your data and navigate the constructs within Form 2. Areas 1 will show the tabs for each of the constructs within the benchmarks. In this example, I have selected Benchmark 2, which is child injuries, abuse, neglect, and maltreatment, emergency department visits. Under Benchmark 2, there are three constructs, which are safe sleep, child injury, and child maltreatment. As you work, don't forget to click save, shown in area eight. Then click next, shown in area seven. Clicking next will take you to the next construct, which in this case will be child injury. In areas two and three shows the definition of the numerator and denominator, and definitions are available for each construct. Areas four and five are rows for missing data. In area four, you will enter the value for the number of missing cases. In area five, the system will auto calculate the percent of missing data once all other values for this measure have been entered. And lastly, the comments box shown in area six. Each performance measure will have a section for comments for you to provide and your comments will be visible to your project officer and TA specialist. 
Comments are required if the total missing data is greater than 10%. Here is some helpful information when entering comments in your report. Form 1 comments only has a maximum of 1,000 characters, and there is a comment box available for each table. Form 2 comments has a maximum of 2,000 characters, and there is a comment box available for each construct. For both forms, if missing data is greater than 10%, comments should be entered for the reason behind the missing data and possible plans to reduce the amount of missing data in the future. As you are completing your report, the form will identify validation errors. In this example, from an older Form 1, Table 6 shows an error due to the total not matching the total in Table 1, which is a count of all participants. The validation error will tell you why this is an error. In this scenario, the total value in Table 6 does not match the total pregnant women value in Table 1, and the total adult population in Table 6 does not match the total adult population in Table 1. The error message shows you what the total should match. In this example, Table 6 pregnant women should equal to 10. In Table 6, all adults total should equal 30. As mentioned before, all fields in the report must be completed and must meet system validations in order to submit the report for review. The example shown above is the validation report that the system runs after you hit save and continue. After you reach the end of the report, which means completing benchmark six, or if you click on validation in the left-hand navigation bar, this report lists the forms and tables each error can be found, as well as an explanation of the error. As a reminder, most Form 1 validation makes sure that the totals on Tables 3 through 20 match totals reported on Tables 1 and 2. There are no validations for Form 2. Once you have completed data entry and all validation errors have been addressed, you can submit your report. There is a checkbox to clarify the data submitted is correct to the best of your knowledge. Click and confirm and send your report. After your PO and TA specialists review your report, they may request changes. POs and TA specialists can provide report or table level comments. POs can lock fields, so you can only change values and unlock fields during the resubmission. POs will unlock all fields where changes are required. POs will determine the resubmission deadline on a case by case basis. Make required changes and resubmit using the same process as the first submission. When your PO submits a change request to you, you will receive an automated email alerting you to the change request. Once you access it, you will then be able to see in the status overview page which report page has been unlocked. The status of the page where changes have been requested will be shown as in progress. Note that not all pages that have unlocked fields may require updates. This is because of the system validation between tables. 
Be sure to discuss any necessary updates with your PO and or TA specialist. Now that we have an overview of the reporting process, let's go over some helpful tips. Here are some helpful tips for Form 1. First, you will want to complete Tables 1 and 2 first. Since many validations are based on those tables. Second, make sure to select Save and Continue as you move from page to page and be sure to save frequently. Enter table level comments if you want or need to provide an explanation to the reviewer and table level comment boxes can be hidden if you would like more room on the screen. For Form 2, remember there are no validations that exist between Form 1 and Form 2. You will want to provide information or an explanation about missing data that is greater than 10% in the comment section. Note that the auto calculation in Measure 9 for child injury is a rate, not a percentage. You can either, either use the tables at the top of the screen or next and previous buttons at the bottom to navigate through measures. Remember, this navigation does not save information. Some of the more helpful tips are knowing what reviewers are looking for. Reviewers will look to see if the data is significantly different this reporting period versus past reporting periods. And are project officers and TA specialists aware of the change? There is a large number of missing data or if there is a shift in the distribution compared to, to prior years. The data is aligned with the definitions. The denominator in Form 2 seem reasonable as they relate to demographics in Form 1. And lastly, the amounts and descriptions of missing data provided in comments align with our understanding of how data is reported and collected. As you are completing your report, these resources are available to you. The McVie Performance Report for Grantees is a HRSA 2 video that provides a more technical overview of reporting both for annual and quarterly performance reports in HBIS and walks the user through the HBIS interface. Since the HBIS is a part of EHB, there are helpful EHB related videos provided by HRSA that can be found on the HRSA 2 page. Guidance, performance measure, FAQs, and toolkits for Forms 1 and 2 are located on the HRSA website. In addition, your approved performance measure plan should reflect HRSA's guidance and accurately reflect data collection and reporting practices in your state. We hope this training webinar is able to assist you during the MIGV annual performance reporting submission period. Should you need additional assistance, here are some helpful points of contact. For the HRSA EHB Contact Center, please call 1-877-4772 from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekdays or visit the, visit the online contact. Please contact them for password resets or if you're experiencing issues accessing your report. Contact your project officer for questions related to performance measures. They will work with your TA specialist to resolve your questions or concerns. If you are experiencing system-related issues, please contact Naima Mohammed 
and your project officer. When possible, please provide details on your system-related issues with screenshots. To learn more about our agency, please visit www.hersa.gov. Thank you.